I'm okay. And like, that's probably why I'm going to cry. Like, I think mm-hmm. I'm just like, one thing I've been saying recently is anytime I felt hurt or broken or confused, it was like, those were um, such bad things to feel. Cause that's what mm-hmm. the society that we live in, especially in the West tells us. And I would always just like pull up my boots and be like, okay, what are the 10 things I need to do right now to fix yes. all of these things and numb myself? And then I wouldn't cry. I would just get through it. And now I'm just like, I feel confused and lost or when I feel broken and I feel completely whole in that feeling. And I'm just like, well, you did that interview with Aubrey, that idea of just like letting it wash over you and seeing people's pain Mm -hmm. and just feeling it. I'm like there right now. So I've just been crying for like the last two weeks. Anyone tells me their story or anything and I'm just Mm -hmm. allowing it. (laughs) Well, I'm so grateful you said that and opened up with that because I, even before I got here, was at Whole Foods and there was this man with a dog and the way that he, this is how insane I am. The way he was holding the dog chain felt too tight for me and the dog looked scared. And I was like, God, how do I live life when I am thinking about this dog for the rest of my afternoon that I'm perceiving to be held too tightly on the chain? It's like in in the Aubrey interview, you probably heard it's such, and I'm excited that we're going this direction. It is such a beautiful blessing to feel and to be a feeler. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. such a gift on this earth, but it is so exhausting at times. And I actually mm-hmm. still am working with that energy of how can I see this as a blessing when sometimes it feels like a burden? It's like, okay, when is the other side? When is the beauty? So how do you, is this new for you to just be feeling and really be experiencing all the tears instead of moving to solver? Or are you someone that's seasoned in the ability to feel? I am seasoned in that, like, I have been this way since I was a child. And I think that kind of stopped when I sort of, my first book became so big. And then all the noise of being like pushed into the public sort of came in. I think that made me very numb, which we can talk about later. But uh, my dad had this running joke (laughs) about how I'm so... It, when I was younger, because he would say that, oh, she could cry at the snap of your fingers. And I could, it was like, and he didn't understand that because he's not a crier in my house was a, you weren't allowed to cry in our home. And that was very difficult because I'm so empathetic. And I, I, I would, I would see somebody on the street who looked sad to me yep. and I would just, I couldn't. And I just, five years old and I'd just be bawling, you know? And I think that's why I write, like I have to put it somewhere. And I've always felt like I use this metaphor of feeling like a sink that's overflowing. Mm -hmm. And it is like, if I don't put it somewhere then it's just going to like rot me from the inside. And so poetry and writing really became the sort of like vessel where I could like safely store it somewhere and then share it. And then that for some reason, when I would share it, it would make me feel connected to other people because then other Mm -hmm. people would be like, yes, I feel that too. Or I've had this experience and then we could talk about it together and feel less alone. And so I think that really became the sort of like full circle moment for me. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. I mean, it's so hard to figure out. Okay. You can feel it. And then where do you put it? And I, mm-hmm. I don't know the answer. There's no right answer. But for me, the answer is art. Yeah. You're like healing through writing. And then you like lift <laughs> your book up. You're like, I have a solution for all of you. Oh my but God. That's so true. It, Hold on. It is, honey. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> should I go get everybody? <laughs> yes, get it. <laughs> oh and then God, you're like, thanks so everyone for joining. This was amazing. <laughs> This wasn't an ad, but that does yes. fit perfectly into this. Oh it's my so god! Funny. And so, I guess what has been, you know, if you're if you're open to sharing, mm-hmm. because it is, I'm. If you, I think you as a feeler and someone that shares so much from your heart, I'm someone that if I have something on my heart or my mind, it's really hard for me to sort of be in conversation if it, if I don't kind of bring that in. Is there? for the past two weeks, you've been crying. Are you willing to share, you know, what's sort of been on your heart that's felt really emotional for you? I feel like I am in between this crossroads 
I've performed for the last 13 years and much of this last decade, well, mostly all throughout my twenties, I've been in the sort of like public space, public eye, and I'm turning 30 in a month and, oh my God, it's coming. Um, Mm. And I, I guess I'm just like processing. I mean, I don't know. It just, I feel like it goes by like this and I've just been on this like train that I didn't know I was getting on because that book I wrote for me, it wasn't even a book. It was poems that I wrote for myself that made me feel so close to home in my body. And then it was like one thing led to another, led to another, and it all got very out of hand. And then it all just was everybody else's. And then oh, everybody. Suddenly this book is in millions of hands. And then whew, it's like, now I have to write the next one. And then the mm-hmm. pressure and then the, I have felt like a like machine, just the mm-hmm. pressure to stay relevant, push things out. The pressure of like, I have a team I need to keep creating because I have to make sure that I I am feeding people. You know, I am that person for my family and I'm very fortunate to be that person. I feel blessed to be that person. When my success came, it was a time when we were not financially well. And so this really was a blessing. But now I'm really at a crossroads with like how I want to live the next 10 years because it's definitely not the way I've been living it for the last Mm -hmm. 10 years. And so that's kind of where the emotions come from. And I've been talking to so many artists and writers and so many new people I've met. I've been traveling for a little bit for over the last two weeks and hearing their stories and hearing them sort of share the same things I'm talking about has made me even more emotional, Um, made me feel less alone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose. And follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.